electronic field itself is a very costly affair. Even in the drone industry, the minimum cost of a ready-made drone will be around 50k. I would start with 10. So if you want to go into an engineering field, uh, unfortunately now we have to study MPC, which is Maths, Physics, Chemistry. So you have to take up that group in 10th. I mean for 11th and 12th. So once you finish your 10th public, you have to take up Maths, Physics, Chemistry course because that is the you uh, know. basic stepping stone to engineering if you want to take up engineering you have to study mpc course you can't take up uh, bcom or commerce field and then come into engineering there are a lot of engineering where you can do the ug like you can study any field there are drone pilots who have studied civil engineering and come into the drone field there are many pilots who are csc or triple e engineers and they have come into the drone field so this drone field is not limited to any any background I can even be a uh, you know art student or a viscom student or a journalism student for that matter, and I can come into the drone field. So it's not a problem. Anybody can come. Uh, your uh, you know your educational background is not a problem at all. Only your involvement in the field and you know how you take it up is the most important factor. And uh, for the you know education thing, uh, I would recommend that. those are those who are indians and those who are very patriotic like me you better stay in india there are like colleges opening up iit has opened up you know pg courses in the drone industry there are two two year pg courses there's one year pg courses happening at iit in the drone technology because of lack of technology here maybe the technology which is available in us is not available in india so for that matter if somebody wants to pursue something very unique they have the option of going abroad and learning okay you can be a full time drone pilot you can only fly drones and not go into the other sectors so then there is a drone engineer okay so there may be a assembler like me who only assembles drone so uh, a total drone engineer would ideally be someone who can assemble a drone who can integrate a drone and who can also fly a drone so that would be the 100% drone engineers so other than that you can become a drone manufacturer so many companies right now are you know involved in 3d printing drone parts so if you are uh, if you know about 3d printing you can even manufacture you know, drone parts so drone manufacturing is a field which is coming up very 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 uh, you know you know advanced in india and uh, government is giving this pli scheme wherein performance linked incentives are happening as we speak so the list of uh, pla companies which have done drone man you know have been drone manufacturers and given out drones you know the government is actually rewarding them right now so that's how it is in india and, and i think this industry will grow and india would become a you know drone hub for the world hopefully hopefully by 2025 you use this word drone not many people will, will connect with that word right. you know yeah so all these people you know mostly those who are, who know about it will refer to it as helicam so that's how it started the word helicam because it's helicopter and camera combined it's going up like a helicopter it's it's called vertical take off and landing it can take off and land from anywhere and it has a camera so it's called helicam that's how it started people connect to drones as something they see in marriages anybody you go and ask Okay, I've seen this man. This thing flies around and takes photos and videos. No, that's all. Okay, so it's not about that. A drone with a camera is capable of taking pics and videos. Also, that drones are only for uh, you know causing harm. So some people think that drones cause harm. No, uh, you know it's a, it's a, it's a, how we use it. For example, you know nuclear technology is there. Nuclear technology is used as a boon. in the defense industry wherein foreign ships and nuclear submarines are run by it and they can continuously run for years and then you put a nuclear warhead you drop it on somebody it becomes a bane right yeah. so it's a, it's a boon and a bane how you use it matters so i don't i don't require that the basic requirement now for a you know we have this uh, dgca you know dgca dgca is the governing body of civil aviation right so now there are dgca approved flight training organizations so ftos are places where they will have you know a uh, 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 
runway and a landing pad and they will be teaching cpl courses that those are ftos and then there are rptos where it is specifically for remote pilot training so the whole thing goes a remote pilot training organization where they will be teaching only about drones so there are a lot of rptos popping up in india right now and they will be teaching only about drones okay so anybody can go learn they need to have a 10th pass certificate and that too with english they should have a valid passport and aadhar card this much is enough to go learn you don't there is no limitations of what i studied you can be a viscom student i mean 10th pass is not even a viscom student right you just need to have a 10th 10th pass and you can go learn about drones and you can get certified so this is a dgca certified program wherein they will learn about drones and they will get a valid certificate and then that will entitle them to go work in any drone company maybe the drone companies will have a age limit or something or experience limit but legally with the certificate you can go work in all of india in any drone company so rpto basically is started by the dgca just for giving drone training it is a institute any rpto will be a institute just to give drone training and uh, i would say because i am from chennai i am saying it with pride that the chennai mit campus where abdul kalam sir studied has a rpto and it is the only rpto which is having a small and medium category training so medium category training entitles the person uh, uh, to fly a drone up to 150 kg so that is the maximum and it is only available right now in the mit campus in chennai many mobile players and many players who do you know play in ps3 or ps5 right now i think ps5 is the latest so those players are you know they will have more advantage than anyone damn sure okay. because their hand eye coordination will be on a different level so your hand eye coordination see, one thing we do in this you know drone training is will be giving simulated training wherein they will be having a, a re- remote controller or transmitter in their hand and they will be training in the simulator so what why we do this is to you know stimulate their uh, hand eye coordination they have to see the drone and they have to give the control also so uh, this will be in really top notch with gamers who have played you know ps5 or you know all those games okay so the government government jobs would mostly uh, at least 85 to 90% would be on tender basis so government jobs you know how it is they won't take you up directly they would you know give out a tender you know a project for example we have agricultural land in rajasthan or agricultural land in punjab it will be some hundreds of acres and they want to map that so they won't physically they won't be having any drone pilots or you know drones the government won't be having so they will subcontract to a service provider based on the tender and that company will provide the drone pilots and the drones and they will do the mapping and do the post processing maybe they do the post processing work as well and they will give the report to the government and there are some there are some fields in the government for example uh, you know icar which is a you know a center for agriculture research wherein there are need of drone pilots okay and there are some government institutes where there are need of drone pilots